Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's the ARPG podcast. Apparently, it's pointless. Is it, though? I don't know. I'm Guru. This is Chewy. As we start every podcast. How's it going, Lucas? I don't think you get the joke behind this picture, but okay, fine. I'm okay. Look, I'm autistic. Things fly over my head all the fucking time. Okay. Anyway, how's it going? Be like Drax. Say that again? Be like Drax. Be like... what? Drax. Well, what is Trax? Drax. From... Oh, Drax. Is that a villain from Sonic? No, that's the guy from... The Guardians. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Well, I mean, I wish I looked as good as Batista. <laughs> No, but be like Drax. I'm too quick. Nothing goes over my head. Anyway, uh, do you want to start off with something to talk about that happened this week? Um, I, I don't know if you want me to enter anything. Well, do you have anything you want to talk about this week since normally I start? Um, there was, uh... No, nothing, nothing, nothing besides other current events, I suppose. No, no, no. Okay, well then let's just start with, well, let's just get it over with. Uh, yeah, so we are a podcast about otaku culture, really, and of course we have to talk about the sudden graduation announcement of Hololive's Kira Coco. Oh. No, it was apparent. It's apparently been something she's known for a long time, and like planned for a long time. But it was finally announced. Uh, what was it? Just last Tuesday, maybe like just this Tuesday. And I've never seen a more visceral reaction in like a community than this. Like it was actually insane to me. Like this, the second it was announced, you just saw people just honestly broken. I mean, yeah, understandable people. And like, you know, it's had a couple days, it's settling in for a lot of people, and a lot of people are like, you know, doing the things that allow them, you know, to stay positive. And like me personally, I was pretty fucking broken when I first heard that because we all love Coco, right? She was what a lot of people's first experience with Hololive because she was bilingual. Yeah. And this is before like Halloween even started too. So Well I mean she's apparent she's pretty much the main reason Halloween started. Pretty much. Yeah. And that's the thing I wanted to, like, uh, go into more is I don't think, outside of maybe Kizuna Eye, I don't think there's a more important VTuber legacy than what Coco did. Oh, okay. Like, she... Like we 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 can make the case that Hall Alive was slowly leaking into the West thanks to the likes of uh, clips with uh, Fubuki and Corona showing up, especially. But like Coco was the person that like just bashed the door down in a sense, right? Um, I, yeah, I suppose, yeah. The, the... And like Besides we always. Yeah. we see all around, like we see people from V Shoujo to independent VTubers. All around stating that uh, Coco was their inspiration. Okay, yeah, I can definitely. See and that just thing. think about that. This is a hollow. Like, a lot of people want to paint Hollow Alive as the boogeyman, and a lot of times, right? The boogeyman. <laughs> but just the fact that Coco was able to impact everyone, it seemed like from Zenyatta to Nanners to some independent people like Patra. To uh, all the whole alive people, right? Yeah, I can understand that. It's just, it's kind of insane to me that she had such a huge reach 
from Asakoko, where she was literally running herself into the ground doing it every morning, to the Reddit shitpost review. You just oh, yeah. being able to, like, the one thing that was very interesting to me is you, when you look, when you look at it, she was just a rock for some people. A rock, or at least something that, you know, wouldn't disappear for a while, a monument type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, the amount of stuff she did in Hall Alive is insane. From helping Aqua when she was having troubles years ago, to, uh... All the stuff she did for gen her own gen. Mm. And like you see, when you see Lammy mention how like Asakoko was an inspiration to her to do this, it's just like, man, it's just insane. Oh, there's a certain picture. There's a certain picture I'm looking that pretty much explains. Oh, where is it? What's your name? Damn it. Uh, where are you? Hold on a second. I want to find it because to me it pretty much explains... Uh... Well, I'll, I'll just tell you the picture. It's a picture of Coco standing there with like little babies of Halloween all around her, right? Okay. And it's to symbolize that like Coco was the start. Yeah. And like that, 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 that made me t tear up a bit because it's just... And I really think the final thing that made this graduation announcement hit so hard for a lot of people is because this was really the first graduation of Hall Alive. Because, like, you, you, they'll mention, oh, what about Hitomi Chris or, say, uh, Mono from Gen 5, right? Mm. Those barely lasted two weeks. That's... That's true. Like... We, Mono was tragic. Mono was tragic, and it seems that Hall of Life have learned from their mistakes with Mono. I don't know what happened Which, with her. What, what happened with her? Mono, pretty much, there was a mistake where a test stream got leaked, right? Oh, okay. But then what happened after that is she got doxxed really bad. Ooh. Like, um... Uh, Person like I believe it was a uh, former friend, former boyfriend that was just like, yeah, pretty much. She was doxxed horribly, and she decided to graduate after the uh, whole thing. Right? That's yes. Yeah, that's weird. And this and this was just a bit after when Yorzor Mel had to pretty much stop streaming for eight months due to a stalker incident. Oh, that's lovely. People were complaining that they heard a male voice in one of Toa's streams, and that really started Toa's whole thing where now you could make the case that Toa has more overseas fans than Japanese fans. Oh, okay. Like the overseas, the overseas group in Toa's all subscriber count is insane. Yeah. And then, of course, there was Mio who had to take, I think it was a month or two break due to the fact that she was hit with copyright claims. Ah. And I, I feel like Aloy was like the last, uh, thing that really made cover smarten up a bit. Did, did she did she disappear or did she just leave? Well, no, she announced her graduation, had a graduation little thing, and then she's gone. How long was she even in? The... About two weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, Mono, she was part of 5th gen, right? Mm. And she debuted. She like, really didn't even debut. Like she was like in Nanechi's kind of thing. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Nanechi, Botan, Lami, and Polka. Yeah. Because remember, every Hollow Alive generation has five members, except for Gen Five. Oh. No, I don't mm -hmm. want to restart my computer. Thank you. But yeah, she debuted on the fifteenth of August, and then two weeks later, she went into retirement. 
because she was just mentally and physically could not continue. Yikes. So, like, there have been graduations in Hollow Life before, it's just... None of them have been disgusting. impactful. Yeah. N well... None of them have been, been impact as impactful, I should say. They've been impactful. Like like I mentioned, Mono's graduation was what allowed... Uh, what what was a driving force in cover really changing their stuff up a bit? That and the whole China incident with Coco. Well, I mean, like, okay, so the companies learned from it, but it's not like they didn't part because of their own volition, in a sense. Most oh, no, time. Coco, by all intents and purposes, is choosing to graduate because she feels like it's the right thing for her to do. Yeah, and in this case, it's her own volition. But mm -hmm. like, for most of the other ones, it wasn't really... Yeah, most of the other, one, most of the other ones, it was their explanating circumstances. Like Aloy, the mono quit because she was being harassed. Yeah. But uh, the main thing is, those were two-week things. Like, we knew mono for only two weeks. While it's tragic, there was no connection there. With Coco, holy shit was there a connection there, right? Mm. And I think it just, that's the main reason why it hits so hard. Because Coco was like everything to some people in Hololive. I hear stuff in your background, just so you know. Really? Yeah. Is it my fan? No, there's some voices. Oh, there's kids outside. <laughs> yeah. But like what I was as I was going on is Coco I mean, can you name me a whole life, life person who's bigger than Coco? Gar the only Gura? two that I can come to mind the only two that I can come to mind are probably Gura and Fabuki. I was gonna say maybe Corone too, actually. Maybe Corone? But, like, outside of that, like, she's... Maybe Hachima, because <laughs> she's crazy. <laughs> Maybe, but, like, she's probably one of the biggest there. Hachima, Hachima. Oh, oh, also, <clears throat> as, as we continue this, I love her attitude towards this. Since people were doing the whole, uh, when she was doing a stream, people were doing this, which is pretty much just a uh, salute. I don't... Was it like a... It's just zero seven, right? Oh, okay. So it's a salute. This is what she said to it. <laughs> what did she say? Yeah, it's pretty funny. No salutes allowed. I'm still here, motherfuckers. Okay, yeah, all right. I think that in large part is what allowing a lot of people to like cope with it is the fact that she's still being her. And, well, you know, the 10,000 collapse. Because, Jesus Christ, she's collabing a lot. Mm. Yeah, no, Coco's retirement hit hard. Because, in in finality, it was the first. Mm. And it makes me kind of impressed to see whole life has lasted this long without a retirement like this. Well, graduation like this. <laughs> Because, like, think about it. Gen 1 just celebrated their three-year anniversary. Gen 2 is getting close to celebrating their next anniversary. And not many have graduated. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, like, there are going to be graduations, obviously. It's a fact of <clears> life. <throat> Everything will come to an end one day. And there will be things well, that will have to fill that hole. Mm-hmm. And, like, eventually Gen 2 will graduate, Gen 1 will graduate. But then if Hollow Live continues, they'll be replaced by, like, Gen 3 will become Gen 1 in sense of, like, stature and length, if you know what I mean, right? Uh, you mean, like, you mean just as a senpai? Yeah, as, like, the... the the main like the experts the ones who've been there the longest oh yeah okay yeah because like he, gen 2 they're going to be celebrating their three years starting in august right because mm. freaking uh aqua she debuted in 2018 mm. gen 1 of course just celebrated their 
it's hard to believe that it's been like three years of Gen 1 and Gen 2. It's like Gen 1 debuted only a couple months before Gen 2. Oh. Yeah, Gen 1 debuted in Ju from uh, May till June, and then uh, Gen 2 debuted from August till September. Wow. And then we didn't get a new Gen in Hall Live till the following year with Gen 3, which a lot of people credit as, like, the thing that exploded Hall Alive. No. Oh. A lot of people really put a lot of credit to Gen 3 and gamers. And then ironically, just not even not even a couple months later, they do uh Gen 4. Not and then they don't months. do Gen 5 for another half month. It's really weird. They seem to pump them out quickly, then all of a sudden just stop. Okay. Well. Yeah, no, so it's gonna be gonna be interesting to see what happens when coco leaves <laughs> we have uh kanata already stating how she wants to maybe try to do the reddit meme review one more oh she and wants to take over she wants to try it for a bit oh why don't you and, just uh, do uh why don't they just do whatchamacallit uh like jeopardy host guest for a little bit well no what I, a lot of people were suggesting is if kanata wants to try it why doesn't she do it like a, uh, like a 10 minute video every couple weeks just to get used to it right oh okay but uh what what kanada was like she was just like i don't know if i could live up to the quality you put and Kalka replies well there is no quality here we're reviewing shit lol <laughs> but yeah no so that was probably that was probably the biggest news in the whole community we also had more news that Netflix is deciding to kill the anime industry again. They had some interesting... Mm. There was just... So Netflix announced a whole bunch of stuff yesterday. Oh boy. There's a whole new mobile suit Gundam coming. Oh. Shaman King is going to Netflix. There's oh. uh, more Eden Zero. Ew. They announced this horror film called Exception. Uh, okay. But the two biggest ones were the anime Lord of the Rings. And that... Which wasn't a Netflix thing, but it was announced yesterday. And then there was that other series by Netflix, wasn't it? Yeah, it's called Samurai Soul. Here's the thing. This is based off that stupid uh, Will Smith movie from a couple of years ago called Bright. Oh, it's based off Bright. <laughs> it is literally based off Bright. <laughs> and it's just like, really? <laughs> like, that, like, like, here's the thing. The, uh... It was like, Bright was reviewed while it was one of the most streamed movies ever, it was also ripped apart. Uh, yeah. But, like, Netflix, why? Mm. Like, I, 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 I... One of my favorite parts is uh, Canopy Effect. The guy who does... who He's the guy who did the... Uh, well, the shitty anime from last year, last winter, X Arm. He did the X Arm video, right? Oh, you didn't know? Oh my goodness! I was like, <laughs> do I have to tell him? Yeah. Um. He was pointing out how like this is one of the <clears throat> one of the what? One of the worst things I've ever seen. The which one? Was it the, in uh, Samurai Soul? Like he oh. can't believe it's being made. For my next work, we are doing a 3D anime utilizing full motion capture for visuals. That is uh, a quote from Kyohei Ishiguru. Oh boy. Um, his full description, pretty much, he's pointed out like, uh, <clears throat> this might become the next X arm. Oh, that's okay. 
He's like, I'm cursed with the knowledge that the brilliant Kyohei Ishiguru is making a bright anime. And then he quotes, why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. It's just... I'm kind of worrying that's going to explode. Right? What was it called? Samurai Soul? I think it's called Samurai Soul, but you could also just type down the bright anime. No, that gives me something else. Well, uh, Netflix, new anime. Samurai, and... s bright samurai soul. I see. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is literally the, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is literally the bright movie just in more. Japanese type of fantasy setting. Hmm. Instead of a modern fantasy. Okay. Alright. Alright. Okay. Alright. Shall we move on to the animation this week that is actually good? Uh, sure. Sure. Did you watch anything? I did. Ooh, what did you watch? Uh, Zombieland Sega. Oh, uh, did you watch yesterday's episode? The one where it's like goes back in time, yeah. Well, the concert. Are we remember two episodes <laughs> went back? The past episodes went back in time. That's the one with Yugiri, but I'm talking about yeah. the one where it was like started off before the start of the actual second. Yeah, season. yeah. How they pretty much revealed what happened and how the concert ended up being just a and they total bombed. failure. They bombed. <clears throat> this is what I don't get. How did Kotaro even think doing that was a good idea? I don't know. Maybe he was desperate. But desperate would have been selling the tickets from, like, the day of the announcement. Maybe. Maybe. Like, did he really think they were going to fill the whole stadium selling it the day of? Hmm. Like, th that that part just bugged me from a bit, but other than that, I really like this episode. Maybe it just shows how green he still is as a producer and manager. Maybe, maybe. Uh, maybe he was over... He was over... Uh, overhyped thinking it. Maybe. But, uh, I really did like this episode. I like that we finally got to saw how the concert failed. Yeah. And then, of course, we need to talk about the news reporter part. That was... I... Okay. It, it, it went a different way than I thought it would. Yeah. yeah. It, it because was... the way I thought it would go is he would be like, how are these people alive, right? Yeah, but it almost seems like Kotoro's done this before. Well, it wasn't Kotaro who did it, remember? Or... At the end of the episode, it was revealed that the bartender is the one who is bringing them back to life. Right. And he's the one who's immortal. He's the Sega. So, like, it's pretty obvious that Kotaro is, like, an ans his ancestor was the guy we saw in episode 8 and 9. Perhaps. But uh, what I was saying is, I thought they were going to play along the lines of, like, the journalist saying, oh, how are these people still alive if they're dead, right? And going along that line. But instead, they go along the lines of the journalist accusing Kotaro of profiting off dead people. Yeah, because that, that's honestly more realistic. Yeah, like, he, 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 he kind of catches you off guard since they thought he, he was building up, like, is he going to go, like, how are they still alive and whatnot? But no, to him, he's thinking he, Kotaro is literally dressing them up like that to profit off the appearance. Hmm. Which makes me wonder, are we going to get the reveal that they are, in fact, zombies to the journalist? Like, how are they going to do this ending? 
How are they? Also, that house that was destroyed at the end of the episode. Was that the... was was that a random house? I I don't know. It it re the way it's shot, it makes you think that it was the house the girls were in. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Zombie Land Saga this week was really good, and it continued to show just how strong this whole show really is. Mm. No, uh, I'm assuming you watched that uh, random music show. What was it called? Uh, those Snow White Notes. Yeah, that one. Um, I believe I did watch the least ones. So they're yeah, they're starting the individual competitions now. Uh, nothing, nothing worth talking about in that episode. Well, I mean, how should I say? Um. It was a your typical of... individual competition stuff. Well, I mean, a lot of the people that showed up in the group competitions, like the 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 main looking people, mm -hmm. of course, are playing now in their individual. Uh, wasn't wasn't bad, you know. Just you know, that's all the opening acts. But uh, for whatever reason, apparently, um, Shamisen competitions uh, apparently do it this way too but they actually put the people who they believe to be more um more experienced or um who who they know are probably more uh better in a sense are put the last areas the last spots so, so save the best for last type shit type of thing yeah i don't know if actual competitions are like that in real life but well, when exactly. it makes me think, how would that be a competition in a sense if they're already claiming that? They're basing it off mostly on um, uh, the winners of like older co tournaments and stuff like that. Mm. Because some mm. of these people mm. have like mm. have won a lot of tournaments or gone okay, to a lot of shows and played a lot. A lot of the th th these other people are mostly just like this is like their first time debuting kind of thing mm, yeah that so. that makes sense saramura the main character is sort of the last area last piece area because a he's never actually went to an actual competition because he's never he doesn't have that drive to compete against people he just wants to find his true sound and that's what he's obsessed mm -hmm. about is just finding his own sound but he's being placed at the further back because um not only is a his mother the sponsor of the cup but also um i i think it's because like his grandfather was well known and his his brother also competes a lot in actual competitions as well as older brother so that's why they were like oh you're gonna put him a little bit further because we've definitely heard a good sound not only early on when the group competition from him but like just the fact that he is all this these people kind of backing around and surrounding him in a sense too which makes a little bit more sense in a sense in a, in a, a bit, basically. Uh, besides that, um, no, yeah, it hasn't gotten too far. It's only been like two performances in, so we haven't even heard like so supposedly the the best um uh the best Samishin player of that age just yet. Which is um by the way a big there was a big twist that was revealed. I, uh, play dramatic music. Okay, so this is kind of weird. Um, oh, I don't know what they call him. They call him Ryugeki something. It's it's mm -hmm. a title apparently for a really, uh, well known shamisen player, of a um, of a house or something. I, I don't I don't know how to explain this. I I don't know the ex the the specifics of it. If somebody knows this, feel free to just go into more in depth. But it turns out, the uh, there's this one. Um, there's these uh, two um, kids that uh, grew up with Saramura back in the I think it was the Amagi, Amagi, uh, prefecture area, and uh, one of them was uh, is basically the 
the one who's going to, uh, or is being rumored to take up the role of his father, who's the so-called Ryugeki, whatever, legendary Shamsen dude. Oh, give me a second. And he's, like, playing out of his... Oh. Oh, something, something just blazing by. Uh, who's basically, like, playing out of his mind. He's, he's known as, like... Because he's won so many competitions, shamanistan competitions in the past, and he's, like, basically grown up in a little bit in the, a little bit in the spotlight because mm -hmm. he plays so well and his, his family's background and stuff like that. And then he's got his little sister who kind of, like, who plays a decent amount and has, has this, like rivalry with Sarumura because he, he never shows up to play but she she's heard him play before mm -hmm. uh turns out their their father is actually Sawamura's um real father <laughs> and I was like what how's this how's this work what does that mean he's he's gonna play against his brother or something uh turns out those kids uh um, were actually uh, adopted or something uh, from his through his like wife's side or something his new wife's side and um, yeah. there's all these random connections now and everyone's just like uh, there's all these connections that show up because the guy's sh finally showing up or something this this his dad is showing up and uh, that uh the white haired lady the silver haired lady that looks like non shonen Sarumura's actual mom just like yeah yeah the lady who looks like she's totally out of place in yeah the show. yeah yeah called him over with his like his bigger brother uh Sarma's actual bigger older brother and then they just like fucking yelling at each other and stuff like that <laughs> they were getting angry at each other because uh, all of them wanted to manipulate Sarma in some way uh the uh Sarma's mother wanted him to recreate um his grandfather's sound, which was uh, the the mother's dad, and like because he was a well known, he's a very well known shamisen player, and he wanted or she wanted to use him to recreate the sound again of his shamisen, mm -hmm. and then his dad actually wants to listen and watch uh, the show not because of his adopted son's playing in it, but because Samur is playing in it, and he wants to see if he, um. He wants to see if he will in, uh, take up his title, his whatever, Ryugeki, whatever thing, title of the household or something. And then there's this older brother just sitting in the middle, like, these guys aren't, their fuck aren't your fucking parents. They're just wanting to, like, use him or something. All of them. They're all, they're both terrible. <laughs> and I'm just in the, like, I feel kind of bad. This is a weird, this is a weird type of a family dynamic. And I kind of understand now why that, white-haired lady hates the shit out of that other the new wife or something I'm like oh this is it gets so it was such a random like dramatic bit and i was like dang and see that twist coming but okay <laughs> was that necessary i don't know <laughs> but yeah besides that that was it was an okay episode decent music yeah. again <laughs> yeah nice nice uh, well, then I'll take some time to talk. Uh, Higahiro continued its strong, just oh, strong I show. Washroom. Be right back. Okay, well, he goes to the washroom. I'll talk a little bit about Higahiro. The main thing that I was interested in with Higahiro was mostly Yoshida's reaction. Because, I, as I stated last episode, there's... No way in hell a normal person would be okay sending Sayu back home with the way her mother is. Because her mom, by all intents and purposes, is still a piece of shit. So why would Yoshida willingly send her back if the place where she's going back isn't healthy, right? That's kind of the idea there with it. And the whole episode was building up to the finale where Yoshida states he's going to go back with her. And he's going to go back there 
to pretty much make sure that if she returns, Sayu is going to return in a place where she can be happy and healthy. Because what's the point of her going back if we're going to repeat the same mistakes again, right? So that's the thought process there with Yoshida. And I'm just going to save this for a minute because it turns out Chewie is destroying a bathroom. Probably just exploding right now in pure pain. Yeah. Um, how is... There really isn't much left to talk about with Higahiro, so I'll just stand, sit here waiting, trying to fill time. Um, so the Euros have started, you know, finally, after Euro 2020 was cancelled. Uh, go Germany, of course. Germany is uh, been the team, the nation I root for every international tournament. Um, no, I will not play Control Epic. I do not care what people think of Control. I will never play Control. Do do do. Um, there was a scene revealed for the new League of Legends anime, Arcane, coming out. It's coming to Netflix because everything's coming to Netflix, and Netflix also just. Hmm. Netflix also is just like, yeah, you know what? Let's uh, release things at a horrible time and kill all the momentum it would have. Okay. Oh, uh, where the? You're back? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Well, I will repeat the Higa Hero stuff because, you know, always like hearing your opinion. Oh, uh, whoops. the latest. Uh, one second. Apparently you all somebody... good? Uh, my dad opened the door. Might have hit something here. Uh, gonna... No, I don't want to leave. Okay, there we go. Mm, well, as I was saying, the latest episode of Higahiro, it was pretty much all built around how Yoshida feels about Sayu, you know, going home, right? Mm. And the end, it builds up to the end of the episode where she, Yoshida says, you know what? Just to be safe, I'll go home with you, right? Oh. Because Yoshida, logically thinking, why would he think Sayu going home is a good idea if her mother is still a hopeless cunt, right? Because right. then you're just repeating the same mistakes. Mm. So Yoshida's going home with Sayu to make sure that Sayu can well just stay there and not be not find herself in the same situation. Which is honestly the right to, right choice. It's a very uh, uh, how should I say? He's very thoughtful, I guess, in a sense. I feel well, like as not, uh, Sayu, uh, Sayu's brother points out. Yoshida's the only type of parental figure Sayu's had in her life. Her mother, apparently, was hoping that her being pregnant with Sayu was a way to keep the family together, but her father left. And because of that, her mother's just hated her. Okay. Yeah, so I'm interested in how episode 11 goes. Uh, let's talk about 86, because it ripped our hearts out again. Okay, I have not caught up. Well, as I mentioned before, the Spearhead Squadron was apparently a suicide squad, in a sense. Yes, that I definitely caught that one. Well, the latest episode last week had what was supposed to be their death. Okay. Pretty much, they're going up against thousands upon thousands of legions. Okay. With the big one being Shin's brother, right? Okay, yeah, 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 I remember that, yeah. And Shin's taking on his brother, and they're fighting, and all hope seems lost until, of course, Lena shows up and drops a metric fuck-ton of artillery on oh. the Legion. Like, the sky is just red. The sky is red! And the interesting part is, well, Shin's brother is about to kill... Uh, Shin. Shin, right? 
because yes. it turns out, oh, he has a conscience and knows what he's doing. Rip. So then Le- Lena drops artillery on them. Okay. Knowing that Shin's con- brother's conscience would protect Shin. Oh. Yeah. She dropped an, an artillery barrage on them knowing that because his brother is so innate to protecting Shin, he'd naturally do it. And lo and behold, he naturally did it. Oh. And because of that, that allowed Shin to land the final blow and finishing them off. Hmm. But that just wasn't it for this episode. The episode then ends, goes to Lena's side of the story like it does. It shows one side, then it shows the other, right? Mm. Lena pretty much owned her bitch-ass friend. Because remember how last week I pointed out how her friend and even the commander were trying to, like, throw their grief and their negativity on Lena to make her feel as bad as they do? Mm. Lena then figured out the boy that her friend apparently abandoned was Shin. Was Shin? Yeah, it was Shin. And she used that as a way to get Annette to launch the artillery. Oh. And Annette does that because in reality, she knows what's right and wrong. (laughs) She knows what's right and wrong. She knows it's all And then the episode then ends spectacularly. Okay. Because the Legion, the Spearhead Squadron, the five left, Mm -hmm. escape. Oh. Yep. The the whole episode, the rest, last bit of the episode is them having a conversation while walking towards what is classified as not Empire, not Republic territory. And Lena realizes they're escaping. And the whole episode is shot with, the last bit is shot with them talking, with Lena just frantically running down the road. And it's just a brilliantly shot scene. And the way it ends is perfect, because it ends with Shin saying to Lena, we're going on ahead, right? Mm. And you could take that like this. Shin saying that, meaning to me, means he expects Lena to come, come there. He expects Lena to catch up. Mm. And I like how the episode is titled, because the episode is titled Goodbye. Goodbye. And in reality, it's not saying goodbye from Lena to Shin. It's Shin saying goodbye to his brother. It is. And I just find that, I found that whole ending scene utterly brilliant. And now, the Spearhead Squadron is gone. They aren't there anymore. So who's going to stop the Legion? Who is going to stop the Legion? Nobody is. So the final two episodes of this arc before the second arc in a probably a season or two. It won't is, gonna die. Yeah, Legion's gonna attack. Legion's gonna attack and everyone's gonna die. And I cannot wait to see all those Albions just die. You know what would be tragic, Marcel? What what will be tragic, Lucas? Lena dies. Well, she does, and so we'll move it on. Well, you don't know that. Nobody knows that. All right, is there a show you watch that you want to talk about, or do you want me to continue? Uh, I don't remember watching much else. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um... I actually don't remember what else I watched. Let's see. I didn't watch the latest of Baku 10, but I think I watched something else. Oh. Did you watch anything there, Sonny Boy? I... I'm trying to watch Kingdom 3, but, you know, it's coming out very slowly. <laughs> Kingdom 3, but it's coming out very slowly. Yeah. 
Um, I watched my the Irumakun. Yeah, also, that was. I also watched that was good. Shakunetsu Kabadi. <laughs> oh, Burning Cup. I don't really have much to say about those two. I mean, they're just quality shows. It's good. It's I, good. I did, I did like the foreshadowing in Arumakun of how he's pretty much going to be considered to be the next Demon King. There's a possibility. I think currently in the manga, he, it's yeah. If more I remember in the manga, now. he's like. They're in that part where, like, the next Demon King is being considered. Yeah, they get into that, for sure. Deeper and yeah. deeper. Nice. But, yeah, no, they're, Burning Kabaddi continues to be strong. I really like the char Kabaddi, the Kabaddi, new characters. Kabaddi, Kabaddi, Kabaddi. The new characters added to the show have been such a breath of fresh air. <laughs> One is so intuitive and not, not bad and, like, physical-wise. Then there's the then there's the sumo wrestler. Sumo wrestler with explosive power, and then there's the trap. I don't know. It's the trap, which is uh, I don't know. It hasn't really shown much uh what what his abilities are. Maybe technique more than anything. Maybe he'll do strategy and technique. I haven't seen much. What I will say is I think they're using that character more to tell a story about uh, the main character, really. Okay. That's what it feels like. So far, this last match, though, has been pretty decent, so... Yeah, yeah. It is telling a good story. I do like it. What else is there? We could always talk about Tokyo Revengers. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That had another episode. Um, uh, I don't know if I caught up, honestly, with that. So you're going to have to tell me which one is the latest episode. It's the one where, in the end, uh, Dokken gets stabbed. Oh, no, okay, I know this one. Yeah, yeah, the big old fight. And wait, he... wait, Dokken? Gets that? Yeah, you know, Mikey's friend. Draken? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, um, it was a good episode. I will say, because of the fights, it felt a little hard to follow, like it was just one giant gang war. But when it took a moment to like show off singular spots, especially with uh, Mikey and the Pachin lover dude, mm. it was good. They'll get to that eventually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think we, my hero, feels fully here now. He's getting into his other quirks. I like it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really good. And the fact that he was able to use the other quirk right away. Well, not fully, but yeah, in a sense, yeah. He couldn't control it, it was, over them, but yeah. The fact that he was able to control it after, you know, first game was good. And it really shows the dark storytelling coming. Because after they're done the latest episode, they're most likely going into... Oh, what's the name... It, it, it's a villain arc. It's a villain arc. I forget its name, though. Um, it's like the future war. Where is it? 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 Meta liberation arc. Meta liberation. Yeah, pretty much. That is just uh, Tomura expanding his power even more. Homura. And, uh,. It pretty much leads up to what's going to be the final arc of my hero. Because after that, it is the Endeavor Agency arc, which is something I am so fucking hyped for. It's, that's the one where Meteor, Midoriya gets to be into uh, Endeavor's thing? It's where, it's where Deku... Uh, it's where Deku... 
Bakugo and Tomoya, Tomoya. go work under under on Endeavor, right? Oh my god, and Tomoya? Not, no, not Tomoya. Fuck. Todoroki? His name Yeah, Todoroki. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. His That's... name was a His name no, was Tod escaping me. Right? Yeah, okay. No. But um they go work under Endeavor, and that's where, like, all of the story just starts leaking out for Endeavor. Right. And, of course, that leads into the big battle where, called the Paranormal Liberation War Arc, which is pretty much just a, a whole fight. Like, it's 54 chapters of nonstop fighting. And then the final act saga has begun where pretty much now they're dealing with the aftermath of the the war the war the citizens view and heroes is worse as ever that's sad. all for one has escaped oh that's lovely and it turns out that x is related to endeavor I believe uh, I mentioned this. To you yeah, before. I know. Yeah, you you, yeah. You, just, you said this one. I remember this. Yeah, and pretty <clears throat> much everything from here on out is just darkness. Darkness. And we're gonna see my hero, in my opinion, at its peak. From pretty much after the next episode onward. We need more. I need more. I need more. Mm -hmm. But alrighty, let's have some fun since we haven't ranked some stuff in a while. We haven't ranked stuff. Yeah, we haven't ranked some stuff in a while due to, you know, delays, Jeopardy, and whatnot. So I felt let's rank some things. Ooh. And we're going to be ranking, well, pain. What's pain, you ask? Pokemon. Oh. oh what is it we're going to be ranking from Pokemon, you ask? We're going to be talking gym leaders and okay. island chieftains or whatever. What were they called in Gen 7? Kahunas and trial Kahuna. captains. Yeah. So we'll be talking about them too. But we're pretty much going to be separately ranking from each generation. Best to worst to best gym leaders. Are we just talking about gym leaders? We're well, we'll talk about Elite Four as well. Okay, I'm good to bring up. Uh... Elite Four and champions. Oh, we're actually going to do all of them. Okay. We're going to do everything. But let's start simple. Let's talk Gen 1. Uh, let me... Grab, and we'll do uh... Gen Leaders separate from E4. Elite 4, okay? We'll do... Okay, sure. Um, Jesus Christ. So let's Where's... start with Gym Leaders Generation 1. Okay, where are we talking like Generation 1, like, just... Leaf green, fire red. That oh type of thing. no, you're talking about that. That I thought you were talking about like red and blue. Well, you can include. Well, what I'm saying is we're only talking about like the original, right? I don't have. Like, it's weird. Like, do we want to talk about them in the better version, leaf green and fire red, or do we want to talk them red and blue? I. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it should be a. I don't know, actually. I also don't know why I don't. I have feel this. like we should talk about them in the better version, since that's going to be the version most people are going to be playing. Are you? Are you sure about that? Name me a person who goes back and plays Pokemon Yellow, Red, or Blue. Anybody. I have not seen a person. But anyway, let's get to ranking them. So chewy. No, no, no. How about this? How about overall all together? Okay, that's fine. We had to consider also the fact that, you know, what they were like in the older versions and the newer versions type of thing. Okay, that's fair. All right, chewy. Start me off. The worst gym leader in Gen 1. Gen 1. Yeah. Who's the worst? I'm looking at them. Because I got mm. one that is a little that is a little surprising. I have to I'm gonna have to like look at like uh, 
I'm gonna have to look at the what this one character is like the entire time because hmm, I'm telling you right now some of the stuff is not very and remember we're only considering when they were a gym leader not when they showed up in random other games right okay okay so I feel like Oh my god, why does she have uh, I feel like Oh no, I can't I can't say I don't know actually I can't look at these at the first part. Okay, well then do you want me to go first then? Uh go for it. Blaine. Blaine. I think Blaine is terrible as a gym leader. Let's see here. I mean, there wasn't a lot of fire types in Gen that 1 anyways. That is true, but even in, like, Fire Red and Leaf Green, he's never been a challenge, so that's bad enough as it is, but he's never been an enjoyable character. Again, not a lot of fire types. Even then, like, you're gonna see, like, I think Blaine, in my opinion, is the most, is a bad gym leader. But, like, when we're going up, I don't think most of Gen 1 is that bad in terms of, like, quality of challenge. Is it because so like he's had... a quiz master, Marcel? Do you not it's like taking his quiz? It's a mixture of things. I do think the quiz master gimmick sucked. <laughs> but, again, I just... He's never brought a challenge that I find acceptable from the seventh gym leader. We'll, we'll we'll keep going on and on eventually over this and like the seventh gym leaders in most games are really fucking tough they're they're they give at least a fair bit of yeah challenge but, but like, at the I same just time find... I, I don't i don't i don't know if i really can blame just because well, it's we'll find out where you will you rank blaine when you do your rankings but like i just i find blaine the most annoying personality his fights I've never enjoyed. I hate how short Cinnabar Island is. Oh like, no, we're yeah, pretty much the, there and gone. Cinnabar Island was not much of mm -hmm. it. So Blaine is my worst in Gen One. Who's your worst? I I can't. I don't know. I guess <sighs> Blaine's down there for sure, but I don't know if I could really blame just the character design itself i think for sure cinnabar should have been a little bit more um i definitely think there should have been more variety in his team um because if you look at just red and blue all he has is a ponyta growlith and the evolutions of ponyta growl like his main pokemon in the original in the anime was Magmar, and he doesn't have that anywhere except when you fight him in Silver and Crystal. Silver and Crystal, yeah, or uh, Heart Gold and Heart Silver, yeah. which was really dumb again. And like Magmar's a Gen One Pokemon. Yeah, and then they had a, they replaced. Okay, there's a weird thing too. In Gold, Silver, and Crystal, uh, the the Heart Gold, Soul, Heart uh, Soul Silver, mm -hmm. he he also replaces. He, he he trims down from four to three, and he replaces the third Pokemon with a Johto Pokemon being Meg Cargo. And I'm like sitting here going, "That's that's bad. <laughs> that's yeah, even Mac worse. Meg Cargo's terrible. That was that was even that's even worse of like an add on. I know, and it's just there's there's a lot wrong with Blaine. But is who is your worst, Chewy? Oh, the more I talk about it, the more it feels like it's blamed, but I can't blame him at the same time because the freaking first gen and second gen fire types weren't even that great, honestly. Or and there weren't then, that many. Like we'll 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 take we'll, like we'll talk later, but even then, personality means something too, right? He didn't stand out, yeah. I, I suppose that's a thing. He didn't really stand out. Like every other gym leader in Gen 1 has a unique quirk to them that is enjoyable 
all you had to do was go to, uh, I think, the Cinnabar Mansion or something to find a key yeah. or something in the first one. Mm-hmm. I guess that was a little bit of fun because you dealt with some, was it, ghost types or I'm going to be honest, that, that mansion sucked. It's just, he could have had Magmar, he could have had like nine tails he had nine tails he later doesn't... on like pokemon yellow i don't get why he doesn't have magmar considering it was his main pokemon in the fucking anime he could have also like had Blade nine tails and on top of that so that that four would have been all original pokemon you don't have to use any pre-evolutions whatsoever like again blaine in the anime was incredible Pokemon Sped, I think he... I don't remember what he used primarily. I well, I can Google... Arcanine. I can look at that right now. You're you're talking about the manga, right? Yeah, I forget if it was Arcanine. Arcanine or Rapidash. I, take a look. I think it might have been Rapidash, actually. But, yeah, no. There was no variety. There was, like... The fact that also back in that time, the, the um... There's not that much, um... Uh, moves differences, so you could honestly just like just mow them down. It was Rapidash, by the way. He yeah. used Rapidash or K9 and Growlithe. Yeah. Um. But as the game went through, at least he's he started to see better moves being attached to him, especially mm-hmm. in our Gold Soul Silver area. I'm yeah, Heart Gold Soul changed. Silver. His second fight is pretty decent if you. Don't use a water type. Fire Red, Leaf Green, his fight was, eh, they had flying moves, but, like, really, that was only to combat against, what, nothing you would probably want to use in this case. But again, where the fuck's the Magmar? I don't know. Turned into a Magmordor and a Magmar, and, or Magmar and Heart uh. Silver and turned into a Magmordor. I don't know. <laughs> so uh. so I, think you're, I think you're starting to agree that Blaine's probably the worst. I was gonna say that, or um, or Sabrina actually. Really, I find Sabrina's like. I don't get it. Why do you have a freaking bug ass poison in your fucking team? And why do you have? Why do you have Kadabra and Alakazam? There was Hypno. There was Drowsy. There was. Uh, you you could have done anything else. Well, I mean, in there Pokemon was, Red and. In Pokemon Red and Blue, she has Kadabra, Mime, Venom, Venomoth, and Alakazam. Why? In Yellow, she why? literally just has Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam. Yeah, why? Why that too? Like, that's that's but terrible. Her, 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 team, her teams get better in the next ones. In Soul Silver, it's Espeon, Mime, and Alakazam. Yes, but that's again later on. Her her uh, gym wasn't that bad. Oh, we're, was counting like a when, we're counting thing. when she's a gym leader. Yeah, this, she is a gem leader in this case. What are you talking about? Heart Gold, Soul Silver, she's a gem leader. She has Espeon. Yeah, she, that's a better team, honestly. Yeah, but she I'm, only I'm, really has. It's only red and bl- red, blue, yellow where her team is genuinely bad. Oh my god! And Fire Leaf or, and, and Fire Red and Leaf Green for whatever reason decide not to, just just wanted to stay with the classics there apparently just yeah what the heck I- i'm looking at here i'm looking at psychic types even from second gen she could have picked slow poke she could have picked a slow bro a hypno an executor a starmie but the thing the thing is a, a while, jinx while, a while jinx sabrina's team is rough sabrina as a character shits on blame well yeah it's a psychic cooler looking kind of thing but and like remember when her remember when her aunt in the anime first aired for her, she was horrifying that's uh, i'm not taking anime into this case i'm taking mostly just from the games itself i thought we were just doing games itself yeah games too yeah honestly I, she, I, she she stood out as yeah she's cocky she she, she knows what she's doing she's she's powerful because she's a psychic and stuff like that but like as the years go on yes she does get better but wow why 
why yeah, that first, i agree that first one was pretty rough first and right, yellow so who's, like why okay I'm, I'm putting so who's eight i'm putting blaine down sure you're putting blaine but at put, eight but i'm putting sabrina at like seven or six because what all the right fuck? so sabrina's seven yeah i'll go seven and you know what you've won me over i'm gonna put sabrina to a seven yeah because what the heck that first team is really bad. All right, I'll go six. Six for me is Brock. Okay. Yeah. I think as a starting gym leader, it's pretty good. Checks you well. And whatnot. Though I also think Brock is gym. And his hearts, gold, and soul silver ones aren't that bad. Mm. Teams are creative. I have no idea why he still has an Onyx as his ace Pokemon. He has a lot of Pokemon, actually, in Gold and Silver. What the hell? Yeah, he's got Gra Graveler, Rhyhorn, Rhyhorn Omnistar, Kabatoops, and Onyx. I have no idea why he has an Onyx as his ace Pokemon. He keeps the Onyx in the rematch, too. He doesn't turn it into Steelix. That's incredible. That's... The Graveler has turned into Golem as well at this point. And hmm. he's replaced the Rhyhorn with the Relicanth and a Rampardos. Like, whoa, man, come on. Is he, like, afraid of the fact that, like, hey, if I add Steel to this, it's going to be too powerful? <laughs> Need to keep close it's to the rock It's just weird. Ground. I also don't like how if you pick Charmander, you have to catch a Nidoran. Do you? In Gen 1, yeah. Why can't you just level it up to just get Metal Claw? Huey, Steel-type moves don't exist in Pokemon Red and Blue. Oh, are you talking Red and Blue? I was talking about Fire mm -hmm. Red, Leaf Green. Yeah, I know. I'm talking about red and blue. And even then, getting Metal Claw, Rock Tomb still crushes your head in with Onyx. At least you'd be able to lowers do the shit speed. to Geo, dude. That is true. But yeah, no, I think Brock is a good first gym leader. He's not the best first gym leader in the game. Honestly, I'm over, like, having Rock-type gym leaders always being the first or second. <laughs> yeah, they did that a lot. All right, who's your number six? Uh, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Remember, your eight and seven were the same as mine. So who's number six? Did they? Oh, no, that's... Okay, when we're talking, like... When we're talking... Um, Fuchsia City gym leaders, are we talking about... Gen the... 1. Okay. Oh, all oh, right. Because yeah, Gen One. Because uh, what's her name doesn't come until the second gen, anyways. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Um. God, I, I, hmm. Like I love ninjas. I can't put Koga down there. I feel like Koga's, but you his can't team put Koga is that low. Uh, his team's just so shit, though. Ah. I mean. No, they're so shit, Marcel. <laughs> he's two. Co he is two coughings, a wheezing, a muck, and red and blue. Yellow. He is three venonats and one venomoth. <laughs> yeah, that I will say the red and blue team isn't bad. Not terrible. What do you mean it's not for, re bad? for red and blue standards. For red and blue standards, his yellow team is terrible. He honestly could have just thrown that coughing out for Venomoth or Venonat. Like, anything. Yeah, I also am sitting here not saying this. Red, for the red and blue standards, the amount of Pokemon, the team wasn't awful. His yellow team is terrible. His yellow team is just horrendous. Come on, two coughings, though. You could you could have put in something else. Because he already had yeah, the wheezing. Yeah, of course he could. But even with two coughings, I don't think it's that bad. I really? will say... His uh, <laughs> fire red, his fire red and leaf green. The fact that they still did the same Pokemon is insane to me. Well, fire red and leaf green is just like 
it's trying to stick to source material as much as possible, which is, I don't know. I kind of don't blame it, but at the same time, it's kind of dumb. Here, here, here's the thing, though. Here's my question. Why didn't they give him a gold bat? Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, Zubats and gold bats were actually his go-to thing in um, Pokemon yeah, Special as well. Cro yeah, he goes to Crobat in uh, Crystal as his... He's a Leaf Four then, but he goes to Crobat as uh... he doesn't have a wheezing or coughing in Pokemon Gold Silver. What the? F he keeps the muck. You have you have three freaking two coughings and a wheezing, and you don't bring that over to Gold Silver. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. He has a fortress. He's a. <laughs> Where, well, I don't think it's like a big problem if you have a fortress in this game because a, if you have Typhlosion as your starter or any decent fire type, you could just melt the shit out of it. But why do you have a fortress in your poison? Type? So you're putting your number six as Koga? No, no, Koga's like five or four. I'm okay, putting well then Koga who's five. Six. Six. Ugh, I'm still looking. All right, I, with how long this is taking, we'll say screwed to the Elite Four. We'll do that next time. Uh, okay, I, I'm saying I'm saying Erica. Erica. Erica's team does not like. Okay. Red and blue, Marcel. She's got a victory belt. She's got a vile plume and tang. <laughs> God, that only knows binding can strike. <laughs> I will say her Victory Bell and Vileplume were pretty tough. Right. But in yellow, they they devolve. Yeah. That's... He's using Weeping Bell Gloom and a Tango. Well, you got to remember, yellow was also more tied into the anime, right? Sure, but... Why? Why take a step back? She's like the fifth gym leader or sixth gym leader, right? Because, again, well, they upped the levels quite a bit. I mean, the Tangela grew six levels. The Victory Bell and the Weeping Bell and Gloom grew four levels. Three. But still. Yeah, I get that. It would have been tougher. But, you, again, you got to remember, that whole Pokemon Yellow was tied into the anime. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll give that to you. But... They're still the same in Fire Red and Leaf Green, though, so... Well, I mean, we've seen Fire Red and Leaf Green's main problem is that fucking... They're too attached to the old game. Source, yeah. But... Source material. So, you're you're gonna put Erica's six, Koga's five? Well, okay, that and she has a jump bluff. I don't... I don't... I don't you don't like jump bluffs? I don't respect anybody who puts a freaking jump bluff. What Unless... do you got against jump bluffs? Unless you uh, you really know what you're doing, I, I don't I don't I don't I don't see them as a vital. No, you you just really don't like jump bluffs, do you? They either they can't be they can't be what she wants them to be. Unfortunately, she puts too many attacks on the on the jump bluffs. It's got to be a status or a setup I mean, of some kind. Her her jump her jump bluff in uh our gold soul silver is not bad. Sunny day, leech seed, U turn, Giga drain. There's no Everyone. sunny day. In Heart Gold Soul Silver, yeah. Oh. Eh. And all her Pokemon have chlorophyll. That's a bit better. Not too many attacks. U turn, I don't I don't know about that then. Yeah, yeah, it's I guess to get out and set it. Sunny up day again. U turn out into Victory Bell. Though then she gets memento and replaces Sunny Day, because she's got Shift Tree now that starts it off. And that has an explosion type. Move. I mean, I her, her, her. I will say her hard gold soul silver rematch team isn't that bad. And the fact that she's using a kimono and stuff like that. Okay, I, I won't put her at. I won't put her at six then. I won't put her. At so it's Koga at six. Koga at five still. Well then. God, I don't know. God, okay, well. No. I, I'm just going to say, my six is Koga. My five is Misty. I'm going to say six is Misty. You're going to put six as Misty. Oh, but I really like Misty. I really like her, her gold, soul, silver team and silver, yeah, silver, crystal, whatever team. 
No, let's go. Let's take a look at those two first because, yeah, they aren't that bad. I mean, Misty is also one of the last gym leaders you challenge in that game. Heart Gold Soul Silver, yeah. I really like her heart. Her rematch team. Her rematch team is very nice. But like, I want to be honest. Misty is not that great of a gym leader to fight. I didn't really enjoy the gym itself. It wasn't anything special, the, was it? It was just running yeah, across the Yeah, the gym itself pool. wasn't great. My issue with Misty is if you don't choose Bulbasaur or in yellow have Pikachu, yeah. you're just in for rough time. And you gotta go grab that uh, different grass type, I guess. Yeah, like, I think, I think you can catch a Gloom. Oddish or something, yeah. But, like, just, I just don't, I don't know. Like, I get, I like that both games stick to the fact that her main Pokemon was Starmie. Starmie and Star you. <laughs> but it just feels like, while I think Brock was, I don't know. There's just something off with Misty. Maybe I'm just biased towards, don't like Misty just because she's, like, loved by everyone. Okay. I will say her let's go, her let's go team wasn't that bad. It was Psyduck and uh, Starmie. Yeah, it's not bad actually. All right, so my my uh, six is Misty. My five is Koga. Your six is Misty. Your five is Koga. Really? We oh okay. I'm guessing your four is going to be Erica. I'm going to put four as Erica. Yeah. Yeah, I think I am too. I think Erica is probably one of the better gym leaders. Oh my god, wait. No, 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 no. I'm putting four as Lieutenant Surge. What is this? I liked his... Really? I didn't mind his gym, but I, I don't like this team. I don't like this team at all. I... The team isn't good, especially in yellow. It's just a Raichu. But again, you gotta remember, yellow is so tied to the anime. I know, but it's just a Raichu. Gold, I... silver, crystal. He has his Magneton, thankfully, and an Electabuzz and a Raichu, but he has two I, electrodes. I have, always, I have always liked Lieutenant Surge because unless you're prepared for him, he's kind of probably the hardest gym leader. Really? He's got a lot of static. He... Holy crap. He punishes you very hard if you aren't prepared for it. I, hmm. Yeah. He's hey. a lot like Whitney. Well, he got rid of s explosion on his electrodes here in the or Gold Soul Silver, except for one self destruct. Yeah. But no, I really do like a Lieutenant Surge. I think as a challenge, he's very good. Yeah, I didn't find him too hard because again, electric, electric gems I feel like are just a, a shit show. Well, I mean, in Gen One, most people tended to have a Nidoran or a Nita Queen. Well, I mean, there's that, and there's freaking Dugtrio, and you can just earthquake too. There's so many ground types or like rock ground types you can work with. Things with like lightning rod and everything. It's. Mm. I feel like you can combat this pretty easily. Well, then again, I don't know if actually Lightning Rod was... No, I think wait, Lightning I Rod were, was... I thought there were eight gym... Wait, what? Hmm? Oh, my God. Was there... I thought there were eight gym badges. Yeah, there are. Okay, so... Blaine is eight. Sabrina is seven. Koga is six. I mean, Misty is six. Blaine is eight. Sabrina is seven. Misty is six, Koga's five. You said Surge is four. Yeah. No, you said and Eric... you said Brock was something, didn't you? Brock, that's who I'm forgetting. You okay, said... sorry. You said Brock yeah, no. was. For Brock you. was six. Six. Yeah, I yeah, said Misty was five. That's what I was forgetting. My I bad. said. Uh... You went Blaine, Sabrina. 
And then I said Coco was five. I said I agreed Brock was a. You haven't named Brock. You said Misty was six with me. Six. I said Coco was five. Yeah. And now you're doing Surge at four. No, actually, I'm gonna switch. I. I might bump it up a little bit. Left to, the only people you have left to rank are Giovanni, Erica, Serge, and Brock. I'm gonna put Brock actually at um. You know, what? I'll put it up at uh. Oh, what? Caspian. I kind of like Misty's team, but I don't really like her that much. And Brock's kind of basic and then again I just don't like I don't like how they did the first rock gym leader it's always like that first or second one um I'm gonna put Brock actually at a at a five I'll put I'll bump Koga up to a four but Koga's four and I'll put so, uh god so that, so that uh, means we have the same top three I'm putting, I'm putting Erica at three and Surge at two. Actually, so your top eight is Blaine, Sabrina, Misty, Brock, Koga, Erica, Surge, and then of course Giovanni. Yeah. My top eight is going to be Blaine, Sabrina, Misty. No, Brock, then Misty, then Koga. And then I'm going to go Erica, Serge, Giovanni. Uh, where's the ranking app thing? Um, uh, Ranking website. Believe you want. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's like tier tiers. Tier list website. Yeah, sorry. Tier maker. There it is. Yeah, tier maker. Sorry, I haven't used it in a while. Let's see here. Uh, I'm looking for. Wait, wait, that's what Metopia's story is? Hmm? The Dark Lord is stealing faces? The Dark Lord has faces which he puts on monsters, and then the monsters huh. then kill people. But yeah, we got, the rank, we got the rankings down for Gen 1 now. I feel like this is incorrect. What? <clears throat> Let's see here. No, that's incorrect too. Pokemon Okay. Um Yikes. Okay, uh Okay, so I got Brack. I need I need more whatchamacallit. I need more spice. Give me more spice. Uh, okay, alright, alright. Alright then, Marcel. Um are we gonna do Gen 2 in this case then? We will. Um but before I guess we should at least mention why we think Giovanni's the best. Um I mean he's literally got the biggest story of all of everybody okay moving on to gen 2 <laughs> i mean his team was kind of weird and yet as a kangaskhan for whatever reason yeah but... that, that one is a bit weird though i think they did the whole oh he has ground type attacks we can get away with it but then again that was like first battle rocket hideout and then the second battle sylph co but as an actual gym leader he doesn't have the kangaskhan so it was totally yeah. fine. He had a little 
a little bit hesitant about having the Rhyhorn, but it's because like the ground types are first most and of the time. It's Gen 1, too. Doug like, Trio. Switch that out for maybe a Golem. Maybe. Nitto Queen, Nitto King, Rhydon. Like, Nitto King and Nitto Queen were still... Pretty strong. Pretty strong, yeah. Strong Pokemon. Don't know why they but had yeah, Poison no. Sting still, but that's first gen. Let's look at Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and so Yeah, that's first gen jank. He has a haunch crow. Well, you gotta remember in uh This is Tojo Falls. Yeah, remember he had a there was a DLC later when they revealed that Silver was his kid. Oh there we go. Rhyhorn Duck Trio. Yeah, it's all to whatever. Yeah. His last Pokemon was a Rhyhorn. His last Pokemon was a Rhyhorn. That's the only thing that was weird. Why did they not have that evolve to Rhydon is beyond me. Yeah, I mean, Silver... I mean, Yellow stuck to... to what the hell? They changed out Rhyhorn for a Persian, but still, everything else was still the same. Again, Yellow, though, was, again, more anime and what's more pseudonymous with Giovanni the But Persian, Red right? and Leaf Green were supposed to be to the source, and this is the one time it wasn't to the source. What the hell? Yeah, you're right. Weird. Wait, All who right, so was the 8th gym leader in Pokemon Heart and Gold, Soul, Silver, then? Blue. Okay, should we blue, rank blue, blue, then? Blue would still be number one. Okay, what about Janine, then? Janine actually, would probably Janine would probably plummet down to seven. I'd say she's, I'd say she's actually a seven or a six. Her yeah. team's actually pretty decent. Well, uh, shall we move to Gen two? But her daddy story was kind of weird. Sure. All right. Who's the worst in Gen two, and why is it Chuck? <laughs> you think Chuck's the worst one? I don't think there's that many bad gym leaders in Gen two. In truth. I I didn't actually like Jasmine, honestly. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I don't I know. I get it, but fuck you. I don't know. That was a it was an interesting thing to like introduce her with the Ampharos and like, hey, I need help in this my Pokemon is there's this Pokemon is show because I, I, I adore Jasmine. Like I like I love the character story of how it kind of like interrupts your journey, where you have to stop that while going to beat the shit out of Chuck. But I'm just standing there. I'm like, why? What? It, 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 it was, it was so uh, silly too that like, okay, not only in the the game, but it, it like transcends into like Pokemon the manga and stuff like that. But, like, she basically just cucks you in a... Or not cucks you, but, like, tries to throw you a spinner and just, like, hey, I'm not actually electric type or anything at this point because I freaking... She's steel. Yeah, no, I know she's steel. But she, like, comes across with her... <laughs> her goddamn... But here's the her thing, though. Us, her... And she throws out a Magnemite, and you're like, oh, she's an electric type. And it's like, oh, no, what the hell is this? But yeah, no, but at that point, how many steel types were there, right? Yeah, there wasn't that many, but there was Skarmory, Magnemite, Magneton, and Steelix, really. Yeah, and Skarmory became a big Pokemon for one of the Elite Four, if I remember. No, it was for the first gym leader. For, uh, yeah. What's but yeah, name? they could have at least gave her a Magneton, but other than that, I think her... Her teams are pretty good. Was she number four or number five? She was number six, actually. Oh. Oh. Okay, I still don't... I don't know if I... Yeah, I don't so know. How, so who's your eight? Is it is it Jasmine? I'm going to put her... No, I'm not going to put her eight. eight. I'm looking, I'm looking. Well, as I said, my eight is Chuck. I just think he's too plain. Really? I just think he's too plain. He's your typical brawling fighter dude. His Polyrath can suck a fat one with how many times it hits <laughs> Dynamic Punch. <laughs> just because it hits Dynamic Punch. <laughs> You're going to be that angry. I don't... I, um... I... 
I don't know. I feel like... Uh, I, don't, I don't like... <sighs> I think Bugsy as a character is alright. Oh, no, wait, look. Ooh, actually, a team's a little... You think Bugsy as a character is alright? Is alright. Is okay. It's interesting. He's... He's a... Well, he's a freaking archaeologist or something. Bug catcher. That's yeah. interesting. That's I think that was the first time it's that we different. had somebody. It's different, and I like it. Yeah, and he was young too, and it was like second gym leader. That's not, that's not bad. Bug type is I thought it was pretty cool, but then you look at his team, and then well, again, what can they what can they do at that point? No, right? but like they added so many different types in the freaking second gym with bugs. Marcel, yeah, they could they could have added a Yama, but again. What are you going to add there to change it, right? Since, okay, Pinsir, maybe, but he has the Scyther, right? Pinsir, Yama, Spinarek, Pineco, Shuckle, Heracross. He could have had his Heracross. No, no, you can't have a Heracross showing up that early in the you, game. You can have a Heracross showing up because he's only going to be, like, what, level 14, 15? Yes, but he has a physical attack that could one-hit anybody. Not in level 15. Yes, he can. No, he doesn't. Let's take a look at Heracross's base physical attack. Where is it? Where is it? Base stats. Heracross's base stats is 125 at level 50, right? Yeah, and the only things he knows is Horn Attack and Endure and Tackle and Leer. Unless... Nah, I still don't like the idea of throwing Heracross in early... Unless you put in, like, Fury Cutter, which is still a weak movement from the very beginning, unless it keeps on going on a roll, I, I actually don't like this. I don't like the starter. I, I feel like, sure, Scyther was cool for having the end, but, like, whoa. A Kakuna and a Metapod. Yeah, they definitely could have switched out the Kakuna and Metapod for, like, Yanma or maybe Spinrack. Or, you know, a really crappy ladybug for the first one. Oh, lady, no, fuck ladybugs. If you're going to have no something, thing. like, to gradually get better and better and during the battle, you already have three Pokemon, start off easy and then get a little harder. You, you, okay, you, 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 you've you convinced me. I'm putting my eight as Bugsy and my seven as Chuck. Cause Cause, what the f Yeah. And second gen, they added so much. And first gen, they already had a decent amount, too. In comparison yeah, to yeah, most, yeah, I, 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 I see your point. Like, look at fighting. Look at fighting. <laughs> Chuck didn't even I have mean, a choice. He didn't even have a choice. I saw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Pokemon in the first gen were fighting, and they added three. Three. Yeah, okay, I see your point. Bugsy's eight for me. Chuck's seven. <laughs> So who's seven for you? No, I I, I think. Uh, oh man, I don't I actually don't know what it was. Chuck's full team. There was a Polyrath, and Chuck's there was what? Team was a Tyro? Polyrath and a Primate. There oh, was Polyrath and Primate. Really? That's it. Wow. Was there? That's a, his whole team. There was no fighting gym leader in the first gen, was there? Nope. Oh, I feel like there could have been. Uh, I think. It's I mean, a his tie team in the me. fighting dojo isn't that bad, but like. Oh, I feel like it's a tie for me at this point. With I'm only Falconer putting Chuck, Chuck at seven. I'm only putting Chuck at seven because his team gives a decent challenge compared to Bugsy, and I just like Faulkner as a starting flying type. <laughs> But why a Pidgey and Pidgeotto? That was... <laughs> uh, you, you'll never know, man. Come on, man. You had... You could have done a Hoot Hoot in a Pidgeotto or something. Why a Pidgey and a Pidgeotto? I don't know. Like... At that point, 
it, Hoot Hoot could stand out as the very start of the level seven because I'm pretty sure you would have hypnosis by then. So then you could be like, ah, oh, that's freaking annoying. I hate that. But like, okay, that was kind of a little bit of a challenge because you had to keep in mind that he had that. But at the same time, what? So Faulkner's my six as well. So my eight is Bugsy. My six, seven is Chuck. My six is Faulkner. Your gonna, eight is Bugsy. I'm gonna switch that. I'm gonna be Chuck at six and Faulkner at seven. I I, okay. I don't like. Even though he's the first gym leader, what the heck? I this is the second gen. You should be showing off some of the second gen Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Um, my five is Jasmine. We've already talked about Jasmine, so my five is Jasmine. I love her design. I like the fact that she has that design, and she's a Steel-type gym leader, too. I find that also rather amusing. Okay, yeah, I'll give that to you. I don't I don't really... I think her badge is fucking plain as fuck, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's plainer than the plain badge. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus. All right, so who's your five? No, it's 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 Jasmine. It's Jasmine. Okay. I can't I can't get rank her any higher than that. Let's go to the four. We got Morty, Whitney, Price, and Claire. Oh, okay. I need to look at some of these in more in depth here. I'm gonna go Price at four. Really? Okay. Um, let me look. The main here. reason I put Price at four is just because he's just a bit too easy. It is just, yeah, it is just ice, isn't it? It's water, ice, and then ice ground, and he's just a tiny bit too easy. Wow, water, ice, what the heck? Really? That's... Like, you could, like, he's got Seal and Dugon, who you can literally obliterate with just an electrical attack, with Ampharos being one of the best Pokemon to use in that gen. Yeah, and then if he switch and... He switches in pillow swine to deal with that. All you need to do is then switch to, like, say, oh, just pure water type. Pure water type. You get a fighting type, maybe. Like, he's just a bit too easy. Ah, pillow swine and, like, these were some... Like, ice types were still so weak back then most of the time. Well, they were also just so non-existent. There wasn't a lot. Yeah, there, there really wasn't. All right, so who are you going for four? Uh, you, you, you make a good point. You do make a good point. I don't mind Morty's team too much, even though it's literally one. Oh, actually, no, I do mind a little bit. But I don't yeah, mind his Mort gym and stuff like that. The thing about Morty is at least Morty provided a challenge. He did because of that Gengar and those goddamn haunters. But still, he could have just swapped that uh, hunter for like a freaking mischievous or something. That's true. But I'm not gonna put him too crazy high. I also or love how they high. took away Dream Eater from his Gengar and uh, our Gold Soul Silver, and gave it to the haunter. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, they completely changed up the haunter's moves altogether because they were they were almost, all right. So oh, who's hunt. four for you? Is But what's Claire's? I don't remember Claire's gym design at all. Are you? Her gym design was like you had to push rocks with strength. Oh. Are you really gonna say Claire is that? Like I get her team in gold, silver, and crystal was plain. But like literally three Dragonairs, one of them no surf, one of them no. We also need one to point out ice what dragon types did she have access to, right? I know, but. One surf, one thunderbolt, one ice. I don't. I don't know. It's kind of like the lance scenario. Heart gold, soul silver. She replaced one of the dragonairs with a Gyarados. What the fuck is this? Yeah, it's literally the lance scenario, right? It is. Remember, in like generation one, he in generation two and <laughs> championship, he had Charizard, Aerodactyl, Gyarados, and three Dragonites. I think I'm gonna well. I think that's just going to have to be part of the rankings at that point, too. Because, like, you got to yeah, stand up and say, think, fuck you. <laughs> I also think Claire as a character stands up far and above the rest. Really? 
I love her interactions. I love how she's like gym leader wanting to go challenge the Elite Four. She's a Dragon Master. I think she's more of a, she's a super S. Yeah, like uh, she okay. wants to challenge the Elite Four. <clears throat> I'm going to say four is price. Okay, yeah, I agree that. I'm going to go three is Morty. I like his team a lot. I like his challenge as a fourth gym leader. Okay, yeah, no. Three, yeah. I'm going to say two is Claire. Yeah, you you pretty much sending the spot on here with me, too. Yeah, three, Claire. Yeah, because two, two, two is Claire. I get Gen 2's dragons have a bit of an issue. I just I feel like, what the fuck, man? And number one is Whitney. Yeah, because she is just an overall, what the fuck is that mill tank? That's ridiculous. Yeah, like, she's a respectable challenge with a unique, like, this the first normal type gym. Mm-hmm. She uses the baby versions, right? The Cleffa and stuff like that? Or did she use... No, Clefable's her first, which just metronomes you to death. And <clears throat> then it's mill tank. Oh, really? Okay, well, I forgot about that. Yep. But yeah, yeah, so we move on to Morty just, yeah, why is there only four ghost types? Just so dumb. Four. All right, let's talk Gen 3 now. Well, actually, what the fuck? Price could have had a Sneasel and stuff. He, yeah, I think Sneasel was more he used for the He could have had a Dylan Bird. Team. All right, Gen 3. Oh, boy. I'm going to start out. And this may shock you, since we've ranked the final gym leaders stupidly high before. I think the worst gym leader in Gen 3 is Wallace and Juan. Okay, give me one second here. Juan especially. I... I, yeah... No, it, I feel like if you chose Sceptile or or even any grass type, you could go through this team pretty easily. Granted, maybe like it, the Kingdra and the Celia would give you a little bit more charge. Like, Wallace, even as a champion, wasn't that great. Let's see here. Like, I know we're not talking about Elite Fours, but, like, even as a champion, he wasn't that great. Oh, wow, yeah. But, like, both Juan and Wall is just... It just did not work to have a water-type gym leader that far back. Even in Omega Ruby and Alpha... Omega Ruby, Omega <laughs> Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Welcome back, Omega Ruby. Um, I know, I know. Welcome back. Like, a grass-type destroys this gym. The grass-type destroys Wallace. Holy shit, like... Like, it obliterates Wallace. The only Pokemon that will give Wallace any... Is Milotic, like, his ace, basically. His Milotic, his Milotic is disgusting. Yeah, and the thing but, is, but like, no, there, I like, generally a ton think... of... There's a ton of water types that were added, weren't there, in 3? Yeah, but there was also a ton of grass types. Oh, yeah, that is like, true. Like, of course, there's, there's Trico, but then there's, uh couple others too you can pick up uh the breloom the letacolos the shift tree breloom breloom is strong ludicolo's strong shift and the big thing they have bad. they're all fast rosilia breloom cacturn yep. even cradley the fossil pokemon was really good could yep. probably endear most of the stuff yeah that's my... but yeah no so the eighth gym leader in my opinion is the worst yeah, which is really surprising, too, because they added a bunch of water types in this one. Mm -hmm. Like, he could have used a Waylord. He could have used a Sharpedo. It was just, like, his team's so He does bland. use a Waylord as the thing goes on, but uh, who's going to be your eighth? No, but that's, like, that's in that's as a champion. Mm -hmm. But who's going to be your eighth? Okay, I think we should actually do nine because there's freaking nine gym leaders in this one. Okay, uh, then eight, nine for me is Wallace and Juan. Oh, God. 
I don't know if I could put Wallace down it, or I don't know if I could put Wallace down it. He literally yeah. suffers from the exact same fate Juan does. He does, but like the only difference is that Juan uses a Crawdon instead of a freaking Sea King, but then doesn't yeah, have the to Milo. Yeah, I... Milo Tick was hard though to deal with. Yes, Milo Tick was hard. The problem is, though, it's just there's not enough there for Wallace as a gym leader. Ah, uh, he's so basic with the Sea King. Why? Uh... Uh, okay, fine. Yeah, sure. All Wallace right, so who's on. seven for you? <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm looking. I really don't like rock type gym leaders as the first. I really because really, you're gonna you're gonna be surprised about my opinion on Roxanne. I think Roxanne is actually a bit better than most of the other ones, but I don't I don't really like them. But I'm not gonna put her at eight or seven or whatever. Who, uh, who did? Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, I actually didn't mind. Okay. Okay. I might have found. Yeah, okay. I, I might have found. Let me guess. Flannery. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I also blame the director, the whatever creative director in this case, for not adding... Not even adding another... More than three freaking lines of <laughs> fire types when you add a bajillion fire and water. And I'm just mm -hmm. sitting there like, this is the this is the original three that combat each other. Why the fuck are we not adding a few more on top of it? The fire has already like been lacking so much. Yeah, and we saw that really come to a head in the next gen with the fire type Elite Four having two fire types. Yeah, it's like, I'm looking back here and saying, Gen 3 should have stepped up, because they should have seen that, okay, Gen 1, there was an alright amount. Gen 2, they did not add enough. Gen 3, yeah, they just and then did they not didn't add, add anything, anything here. Like, were the only fire types added outside of the starters, Torkoal and Nubble? That was it, yeah. And she that doesn't even it. use Nubble. She used Slugma. Slugma, mm -hmm. not even Meg Cargo. Slugma. At least in, at least in Emerald, her team was... Decent. Yeah, but Emerald was supposedly, like, trying to be a little bit harder, right? Yeah, like, yeah. A little bit. But not really, because... But yeah, no, just... I have to agree. Flannery probably deserves to be down here at, uh, 7. Like, even if she in increases the team by putting in a camera up, thank God, and her Nummel, and gets rid of the one Slugma, I really... I. I this 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 overall like direction of fire type Pokemon just shows this gym leader could have been way better. Yeah, yeah, way I agree. Way better. Like you should have been able to use a Meg Cargo in this one. You should have had a camera up in Torkoal Rift in the get go, and maybe one other, maybe, mm. maybe. All was, right, we're going to number six now, and number six for me is Watson. Oh, okay. I think Watson's Ruby Sapphire team is just horse shit. Let's look here. It's a Magnemite, Voltorb, and Magneton. Wow, he doesn't even use an Electric. Okay, yeah, no. That that doesn't make any sense. Why are you not using a signature? Hell, hell, even in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, they still have the same issue. Still but that Emerald team, man. That Emerald team would kick my ass as a kid. Oh my god, they actually did. Oh my god, it's so dumb. So dumb. Oh no, yeah, the Emerald team was at a level 20. You had a Magneton, Voltorb, Electric, and Manager. Oh yeah. None of this. Look at all the static, man. Oh no, wait, two static. Never mind. Magnet Pull, Soundproof, Rollout. Self destruct. Yeah, you pretty much give up maybe one Pokemon to Voltorb because he freaking self destructs after seeing that. Hey, 
I'm not gonna be able to fight this. Unless you got a... Unless you pick Mudkip and you have a Marsh at the moment. Yeah. You might not be But yeah, no, up, so like... Much. Watson is this slow because every other part of his team is just... Awful. Really? Okay. Uh, I, I... I don't know... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know in this case. I'm really... So like, I'm at six. You're at six. Who's your sixth? Fuck. Fuck, 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 I just, I just, I just realized how hard ranking black and white two is going to be. I feel like... Oh, god damn it. Okay. Tate and Lisa is the first the first double double battle ever. I was Lisa. wondering when we were get, going to get to Tate and Lisa. But I I don't know. I don't know if I can really rank them that high because of that. Like I think it's it's great that hey they're actually introducing this and they're doing it the first time twin gym leaders and stuff like that, but Fuck me, man. They only had one it, Pokemon it, it each. It says something that we've never had a double battle gym leader ever again. No? Yeah. And if you're wondering, I have Tate and Lee's at five for me. Oh, I don't know if I can really prank them even. Well, I mean, they can't go <clears throat> lower than six. Yeah, because... <sighs> It's it was hard to deal with them because Lunatone and Solrock have such freaking high special defense. Yep, and they have a lot of good moves on them for double battles. They had good chemistry too with that like light screen, mm -hmm. sunny. Like day. they were a legit challenge. So, uh, with Lunatone as sort of the support and Solrock more offensive push. Uh, mm -hmm. and then the Emerald, they actually add one Pokemon each. Is that two and a Claydol, which also kind of... Yeah, which, no, which also compl complement each right. other, too. Yeah, and they had, again, the same roles again, with Claydol and Lenatone being... setting up Light Screen, and then they would use Earthquake. And, like, even if Zatu went down, you still couldn't hit, uh... Solrock with Earthquake or Lenatone with Earthquake, so you could just keep mm -hmm. going. And then if you put Sunny Day up with Zatu, you could also set up the Solar Beams. It's just... I love how in the manga they had a Spoink. I... 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 What did I have more fun with, though? What was more challenging? Oh, God. Well, again, Watson's Emerald team kicks you in the teeth. Okay, no, I'm going to do the same as well. I'll do six Watson, five Tate and Lisa, because I find uh, Tate and Lisa actually was a little bit more challenging at that level. Maybe right, not the Ruby so... and Sapphire one, but the Emerald one, just what the fuck? <laughs> Number four for me is Brawly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, you have Roxanne really fucking high. Oh, dude, I, you're... Roxanne I mean, Nose Pass is... was hard to deal with sometimes, but, like, I don't know. That was only, I think, when I didn't have a water type right at the beginning or anything, or didn't have uh, Trico or Mudkip. If you're wondering what separates them from me, I just like Roxanne's character more. I think she might be the best first gym leader. Okay, because she's like a student and she's trying to learn herself. And she's she's like, a teacher. A teacher? Yeah. Like, in my opinion, I think she might be the best first gym leader. Hmm. She's a teacher? Yeah. She's a scholar who specializes in rock type. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In, yeah. in oh, my opinion, I think Roxanne is probably the best first gym leader in the game. <clears throat> but we're not talking about Roxanne for me. We're talking about Brawly. Brawly's a dick. <laughs> the... Like, he's just a genuinely tough 
tough fight. Bulk up is such a fucking stupid. <laughs> Oh, dude, bulk up, but then arm thrust, then knock off. Like, there was just nothing about Brawly was easy, especially in the early game when you really do not have that much stuff to deal with fighting. No, you really only had Taylor and Wingle, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe meditate if you went to the cave before or something, but... Yep. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, no, Brawly's my number four. But then freaking Meditite comes in on the an Emerald too, which just makes it even stupider. Mm hmm. Because you. <laughs> he throws up a reflector light screen. And then it's just like, hey, if you don't do anything, I got a focus punch coming in here. <laughs> yep. Makuhita does get rid of knockoff and sand attack in the Emerald version, but reversal and vital throw was kind of. Just more pain, especially after. Uh bulking up especially they also leveled up once as well and he's got a citrus berry on top of that so if you like if you don't finish him off in one move literally he can reverse and hit you and it doesn't matter if you're a flying type or whatever or it doesn't matter you, you're, you're dead yeah he's gonna knock your ass out knock you out you're a freaking bird type uh, yeah okay uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna I don't know. I I I'm gonna put Roxanne actually at four and Brawly at three. Yeah. So for me, it's Brawly at four, and then I'm gonna go to Winona. Really? The only thing holding Winona back is her team is very easy. Uh the only one I really had trouble, I think, was the Altaria. The Altaria. Yeah. yeah. That because I, I don't know Skarmory wasn't that bad or... Skarmory is the, the problem with Skarmory's in gym in gyms is that Skarmory's meant to be a staller and nobody no gym is like that right yeah but like electricity just eats her alive and Emerald and she Tropius is a little bit harder to deal with uh, I don't know I do because the, like, the electric like, electric type uh, advantage you have at that point is just given to normal at that point. So unless you have a really high special attack going in there or something. or high... like The thing is, though, like, the only Pokemon you have trouble with in this in her battle is the Altaria. It... Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, Tropius isn't that high level anyway, so yeah. It's not yeah. too bad. You might have to just switch out or something, but it's not like she'll sweep you afterwards with that if you have to switch out. Or just use a different move. Uh, I... Mm, yeah. And then I just adored her design. I... I... Really? Okay. And then you're gonna put Roxanne number two? Or number one? Roxanne's number two. Okay. Well, mine's... Why known as number two? I, I feel like... Even though some of her fights... Or most of her fights are pretty easy. Yeah, Altaria was kind of just fuck you. Altaria is a challenge, yeah. I feel like if you but leave, I mean, also if Swablu is faster than you and just uses pair songs, fuck you. Just, just, just so yeah. cool. <laughs> this but uh, I think we can both agree who number one is. Norman. Oh, he is such a masterful fight. It's it's interesting. Though, I don't remember. Was he... He didn't have, like, a... It wasn't a... It wasn't a... 2v2, was it? No, no, it was a 1v1. Okay, it wasn't a double battle. I, I thought it was yeah, a double remember, battle. Yeah, remember... Like, add on the fact that he's your father, right? So there's that. Yeah, but like, the first father. In Ruby and Sapphire. Slacking. Vigoroth. Slacking. And the uh, and then in Emerald he gets a uh, spinda. annoying Spinda, a fast Laloon, a Vigoroth, and a Slack King that hits like a nuclear fucking missile. And an Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. He has that. It's uh... two Slack Kings again with better moveset. It's just 
He's just such a fantastic fight. But he also has Retaliate, which is just so fucking stupid. You kill off, like, freaking the first slacking Vigoroth just comes and in And then the Vigoroth comes out with a Retaliate because he's faster. And then, oh, look, you're fighting a slacking again? Oh, look, he's just one hit you with Retaliate. Or if you can't stop the you can't outspeed the Vigoroth, he just keeps on hitting you hard with those retaliates. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, that was like dumb. That was a dumb. (laughs) Like Norman has the story, and he has the fight. That's just great. The the second and third gen normal type gym leaders are no no pushovers, man. All right, but speaking of gens, let's go to Gen Four. Oh boy. I'm going to be honest. I think Gen 4 had the weakest gym leaders. Um. No, okay. I can understand that, actually. Like, their teams weren't that great, and the gym leaders themselves aren't memorable in the fucking slightest. Really? I think the only one I constantly remember is Crasher Wake. Hmm. Like, Byron and Candice are all right. Volkner is just a depressing piss-ass. There's nothing memorable about the first three gym leaders, and Fantia is just... What? I am interested to see... Speaking, though, Gen 4 with the remake coming out later this year, I am interested to see what they do to the gym leaders, right? You don't actually remember Fantina? He wasn't anything special to me. Okay. But yeah, let's start it. Who's your number eight? Who is the worst gym leader in Gen 4? Hmm. Wow. Um. God, holy smokes. Um Wait, why does Candace have a many Oh my god. Yeah, no, that that's the thing. In the first one, you have such weird Pokemon going on. Yeah, that's where like, it's where games. we really saw the flaws in the Pokedex. I Fucking Volkner has an, an Ambipom yeah, and an Octo. An... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to name number one for me to start. Uh, the worst gym leader for me is Rourke. Rourke, really? I don't like him. I think he is way too plain as a character. His team's fine. His team is perfectly fine. His character drives me up the fuck wall. It's too plain. Gen 1 gym leader, like, gym leaders, first gym leaders need to have something different about them. They either need to have a new type, like Volkner did, Faulkner did, or they need to have a high personality like Roxanne. Roxanne was fun to watch, right? Rourke has neither of those. His personality is blank. I mean, the only thing you need fuck. to do is you have to go find him in the mine. Mm-hmm. And it's another rock type gym leader. Hmm. Roxanne could get away with that because she had the personality to back it up. He's just he's just a safety supervisor in the Orberg Brand. Mm-hmm. He's just so plain. Alright, so would you say eights work for you or are you gonna go someone else? I don't know. The thing is like Rourke for me wasn't too bad actually because later on when you found out that Byron was his dad, and then the underground man is his grandfather. And then you look at it and you go, okay, well, I can understand why Rourke is now a rock type gym leader and what he's actually. Yeah, but to do. me, that doesn't add too much because it just isn't like something that'll attach me to the character, right? He, I don't know. He's trying. He's trying. It's just like. But at the same time, I just don't like. I didn't like any of, a lot of these rock type gym leaders in the first, mm. being the first or second gym. All right, so who's your eight? God damn, I'm gonna say actually Volkner. You another... think Vol? 
Look, I think Volkner is bad. Too. No, f fuck off with this shit. They not only made Luxray the worst fucking electric type Pokemon in this case. They should have. They didn't give any freaking like physical electric oh, moves God, until he... Gen Five. And Luxray is an electric type but fighting type. Thunder you know? Fang is. Yeah, but, but it's shit. It's shit. No, he no, doesn't it's have fine. that much. He could have. He but Chewy, gone... the physical Chewy, Chewy, the physical special split happened in Gen Four. This is Gen Four, is it not? Yeah, and you said he didn't get any physical moves till Gen Five, and I'm looking at it right now at Gen Four, and he has Thunder Fang and Crunch in Diamond and Pearl, and in Emerald he has Thunder Fang, Fire Fang, Ice Fang, and Crunch. No, like he doesn't get any good ones. Like, um, what is it in Gen Five? There's Wild uh, Charge? Yeah. Okay, the moves aren't great, but like, I don't know, I think... Also, Luxury was just it's... garbage. I'm sorry. Compared I to... If, think, if I you look, think his team is there. If you look at other Electric-type that use physical-type moves... I mean, I, that, that is also main... Is just garbage. That you... is also the main reason why they moved his Pinnacle Pokemon in Platinum to Electivire. Yeah. I can understand why they changed up all the Luxray's moves after that, because, like, oh, the fangs were way better. But his... Oh, my God, his... <laughs> I will say, Volkner is my sixth. Nah, man, he's he's eight. What the fuck? And he uses and an amp bomb and an Octillery for... The <sighs> only reason Volkner is my sixth, though, is because he's just a bit more memorable than Maylene. I don't even remember Volkner that much. All I know is that he's a dick. I barely remember Volkner other than he's a dick. I don't even remember Maylene. I remember Maylene enough because Maylene's dad was a freaking gambler. <laughs> Gambling addict. That was it. The, yeah, but that's in the manga and we're not considering the manga. No, he was also in the he was also in the whatchamacallit in oh, the I game. Didn't know that. You did you did see you found him in but the But to me Maylene Feels like a Whitney ripoff. Really? She's not a pink-haired, super energetic girl, third gym leader. The only difference is Whitney uses normal; she uses fighting. Whitney actually reminds me more of um. Oh fuck! What's her name? Not B. Beam's more disciplined. I find Maylene's more. Ah oh, fuck! Who is it? She's, she knows she's not, like, the best, so that's why she constantly trains, but she still has the slight flannery. part of being... Uh, that's maybe. Flannery. Flannery, I feel, is a little bit more different, because she her grandfather or something was the... Yeah, she's a young, Flannery's a young gym leader who inherited and is trying to live up to the reputation. But Maylene doesn't have any connections to the to the leader position it's just the fact that she is a leader and she just she's trying her best because she's she knows and i don't know man there's another character i'm pretty sure but then she has this like weird quirky side to her because she's still a kid he's way younger than no her, i so really the problem with maylene for me is just again i don't remember her I barely remembered she was a gym leader. I remember her because of her Lucario, and that was it. And the dad that was gambling, but yeah, and and the and the the gym for the gym in uh, the gym Platinum mechanic was, isn't that bad. The gym mechanic in Platinum was way more memorable than the first one, Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. So for me, my eights is Work, seventh is Maylene, sixth is Volkner. Your eighth is Volkner. Who's your seventh? My eighth is Volkner. My seventh is Rourke. My sixth. God, I don't know. I like. Dude, I'm starting to realize just how bad most of Gen 4 gym leaders are. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Six is Maylene. Sure. 
Biff for me is Fantia. Okay, no, I can I can actually agree with that. I just don't like her teams. Her teams are weird. Like Driftloom, Miss Magius, okay. We don't need to see another Gengar. There's a lot. We of don't need a Gang. I like that they removed Gengar in Platinum, but that's also because she was ranked down to the fourth gym leader, where in Diamond Pearl she was the sixth. I thought she was turned to the third, actually. Was she? Oh, yeah, no, she might have been. I could have remembered she was before or after Melee. No. They're... So Fantia's the fifth. My fourth is Gardenia. Only because she has a Turtwig. I don't care that. That was the only time, right? Yeah. This is the first the time. Only or only time, I think. Uh, yeah, no, I think it is the only time we've seen a gym leader with a starter Pokemon. I don't like that. I also I think like her Roserade is a decent challenger of the game. No, yeah. I can understand that. But yeah, no. So Gardenia is fourth. And fourth now we get to you? the top three. Yeah. Uh, who's Whoa, she doesn't even get rid of the Turtwig and Platinum. What the fuck? Hmm? Okay, that's that's kind of bullshit. All right, who's top four for you? Who's four? I said Rourke was back down there, right? Okay, so it's, yeah, you you went Rourke at, I believe it was six. Fourth. Did I agree with you that... Yeah, no, Guardian. Yeah, no, I didn't like that, actually. Her her, her mechanic and... Her gym mechanic was improved and Planet was mm. alright-ish, but, like... The first one was just boring as fuck, so, yeah, I can understand that. You were going... We're, sorry, fourth now? We're at top three now. I'm gonna uh, go Candace. I'm actually gonna go Byron. The only reason I have Byron ahead of Candace is I really like Byron the gym mechanic. It is fun. And I cannot forgive them for putting in fucking Medicham on Candace's team in Diamond and Pearl. It's so dumb. It's it's ridiculous. It really does show how bad the uh, Pokedex was in Gen 4 Diamond and Pearl. Again... You can also blame Gen 3 on that, too, but yeah. But I think we both... And Byron's number two in large part due to his gym. I think his gym is one of the funnest gyms out there. It's fun, but why did you get rid of Bronzor for a Magneton? I think they just wanted to have more of a challenge. Maybe, but like... Plus, plus Bronzor becomes a pinnacle Pokemon for the uh, Psychotype Illy 4 member. Yeah, but he uses Bronzong. No? Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we can both agree number one is Crusher Wake. Mm. And he, he, here's the big question. Here's the is thing Crusher too. Wake... What's sorry, Is Crusher Wake the only good gym leader? Because mm. to me, I look at it, and Candace and Byron are mediocre. Which, if the two, two, three are mediocre, what uh, do you mean for the rest of them, right? I like Candace's platinum team. Byron, Candace I... is a... Candace could become passable if I did not fucking hate everything to do with getting to her town, her gym mechanic, and everything else. The fact that you're already going slow as it is and then you walk through the snow. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, like, I think Crasher Wake is the only good gym leader in Gen 4. Really? Mm hmm. I don't know. Team Wise is kind of weak still, too. It's kind of. Holy fuck, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. Would you like to split this into a two parter? I mean, I think that might be a more, good idea. We have four more gyms. I think that might be a good idea, considering Gen 5 is going to be so difficult. And we have Gen 6, 7, and 8 afterwards. So shall we continue this next part next episode? Sure. God, we only went through four gens. No, no, actually, no, that makes sense, because we have four gens left over. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. So shall we continue the next part next episode? Oh god, we're gonna have to increase the ranks too because there's more than eight gym leaders. 
I mean, ranking Gen 5 is going to be a fucking nightmare since we have to consider both Black and White and Black and White 2. And the fact that they add on two or three new gym leaders on top of it. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to go from, oh my god, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... 14 14 ranks <laughs> hey it's gonna be different but i mean i think this is fun and it gives us we don't even have to think about what we need to talk about for next episode right yeah there you go yeah so that's a blessing anyway this has been the latest episode of the arpg podcast oh, this has been three hours or two hours jesus christ it's been about two hours so it's just a bit above our average Ugh. Granted, granted, we really did not spend much time this episode on the first two parts. Okay. We didn't. All right. Well, this was ARPG Podcast episode 25. Well, sure. You don't even know anymore, do you? I, I'm just here. Yeah. Alrighty, well, we will see you next time where we talk about more about the anime world. Hopefully, what happens in the anime world isn't, the otaku world isn't as depressing. And then we will finish off this list. Ugh. See you next time, fellas. There's, there's some gross Pokemon hentai out there. <laughs>